everyone and welcome to the Scratch Kiss Academy. We are back with some more Junera today. Um, so first of all, please check out all the links that are coming up in chat now. Um, they include our Discord, they include YouTube, Twitter, everything, you name it, it's there. Um, also a huge, huge thank you to our wonderful sponsors in the form of Bird in the Storm and also Meiji Press, who we could not do this without. Um, I will say again, um, this game in particular has its own set of trinket lists, uh, which I've made. Um, if you wanted to gift um, one of the players something off of the trinket list, um, that, that is a possibility. Um, also, uh, uh, Jagon's Gold will be here very, very shortly. They are running late, but they will be here. So we'll do a quick shout out for all the information uh, for Jay there. Um, otherwise, let's hop down um, and say hello to Tool School. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. How are you doing? Uh, it was this close to you all hearing me sing along with the intro music because I forgot that uh, sometimes that plays with our mics hot. And uh, so uh, your loss. But um, I am so looking forward to jump back into this wonderful world of uh, Daenera. All the things we've actually, she said it last time. She said doors. She said there's doors I somewhere. The I said the title. But she said them. So uh, I'm super, super looking forward to it. So stuff and things. Also, I have to agree with some of the other folks who are like, Alice just seems a little too keen about tonight's episode. Um, I said I was excited. That's literally all I said. Concern. Concern. <laughs> Concern. Concern. Uh, uh, I'm Tall Squall, playing Tall and Falk. Awesome, thank you. And now we're going to hop over to um, our very lovely Hans, who's also our guest this week again. Oh, hi. Hello, hello. Thank you for having me back and having me be lovely once again. I am playing Kamaka, who is the world's best uncle. And he's just going to walk around and give everybody inappropriate gifts. We're looking forward to that. I am also excited about this Doors thing. It's been a little bit. I'm, I want to see where that goes only taken two seasons but we got a door guys we've got a door and last but certainly not least julie <laughs> the door's gotta go somewhere yeah. <laughs> master of rolling that ones and that 20s though can I yes say? because if, i want you to keep this up so bad <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna start like strategizing around it. It's gonna be like, okay, so next time it's gonna be a 20, but this time it's gonna be a one. Gotta make it count. <laughs> but yes, um, I'm Julie. I go by Julie Graybart. Um, I play Charlie here, who is one of our magic users and um, who is just has so many irons in the fire. I think I think there's just a lot of people interested in her that she doesn't necessarily want. <laughs> but that's okay. Yeah. It's drama. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Um so Comfort. last week <laughs> exactly this poor Charlie went into the tangle last week and came face to face with one of the watchers. Christopher, who seemed to have powers, however, there was no in arc way to be seen. And I don't know, Julie, how would you describe it? Was it a sinister encounter in the shop or was it? He's much too pleased to be there <laughs> and to know just more than me. <laughs> yeah, just happy to be there. But Charlie did get out with Tuva and met Kamaka on the way. Um, as Kamaka brought one of my favorite scenes here, trying to get a Silvus into Jin's oodles. Which, by the way, I went into the little village I live in today. There's a Chinese place called Jin's noodles, which I I can't believe it. But there you go. <laughs> um, also, um, we had Tolan uh, speak to Aggie and. Aggie showed him the open compass where the screen sort of fell away and the stars appeared in the night sky could be seen. And we're actually going to come back um, at this point at Aggie's and Kamaka and Jay! That was like perfect timing. What perfect <laughs> timing? Live? Intro, do your intro. You're good. This is just intro time. Wait, we are live. Okay, I, did, <laughs> I wasn't even sure. Um, <laughs> hi, I am Jay or Jagon's Gold. And um, yeah, and I love Dunera and I play Paula Packer, who is a librarian and a dancer. And um, 
yesterday, not yesterday. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I'm like, I literally like ran to be here right now. Um, I, and yeah, and she crashed into her library and there were some like mysterious people there and it was really freaking bizarre. So I yeah, we, we, we left Paula stepping into the bookcase and having to move quickly down this corridor as it closed, as Julie remembers, as the doorway closes. And Paula disappears with Matthias behind into the secret passage. But we start off at Aggies and it's raining outside you can hear the rain sort of pattering on the windows you can um she has got the um top half of the stable door to the back garden open so you can really hear that rain sort of hitting the pathway running off the roof running across all of these flowers that are sort of cascading over the back door and it's it's sort of um, almost supper time, like it's very late in the evening now, and the table has been laid out with just like breads, cheeses, Aggie's pickles, all of these different like picky bits on the table where everyone has just sat down and had their fill and had something to eat. And there's, you can see um, Aggie looking a bit more comfortable, looking very, very full sort of resting back in her chair that is piled up with um, cushions so that she can reach the top of the table. And she's like, right, well, that was rather delicious if I do say so myself. Um, of course, you're quite welcome to stay here for the evening. I'm sure we can put people somewhere. Was it, are you full? Can I get you anything else? I think there's pie. That would be lovely. Pie fruit sounds pie? delicious. I'll get fruit pie. And she sort of shuffles off of this stool and starts like hobbling over to the oven where there is indeed a pie. How's Tuva doing? Tuva is quite happy. If anything, she sat on her chair and is swinging her legs. Kinds to be staring at Kamaka quite a lot, trying to just take it in because she's never really seen him other than when, as we said, she is size of a loaf of bread before so she is just like smiling a lot quite happy to be here she doesn't seem to have been overly affected by what's happened and this red panda is sort of clinging to the back of the chair that she is on just kind of watching her just looking for any kind of um honestly a little confused that she's not been affected much, especially compared to um, Noah, um, seeing how how much that like drained him, but also you did no. notice her appetite was much larger than normal, which is a big thing anyway. So you can guess she was a bit wobbly to begin with, but she has just been non-stop eating as she's been going. Tolan, I think, will look over at Charlie and while Aggie's out of the room and sort of low under his breath, just right before you came, six members, six members of the Watchers arrived to take Aggie to the church. We had spoken earlier this evening. She had been summoned to the Seers and is planning on not going. She has not answered the summons. She's concerned. And six came to the door. That's why I came armed and ready. He sort of um. <laughs> motions to the umbrella. But I don't think just harsh words from an old man is going to hold them off, and if anything, them knowing I'm here might cause them to bring even more in the night or certainly first thing in the morning. That's what I tried to hold them off till, with excuses. Should we, should we go somewhere else that they won't expect us to be, all of us? I don't know how, I think we've got two choices. 
certainly my house is not going to be anywhere that is going to be safe. Um, I, we all have, I think, somewhere we need to start heading. I don't know where it leads. Originally, I was thinking that Aggie would be safe here. She believes her husband had protected it, but I'm now beginning to think that we should bring her with us. I think it's going to be a journey outside of Conan to some of the old ruins, but I don't know. We, he pulls out the compass. We need to follow this to wherever it leads. It's not pointing north, it's pointing somewhere else. And apparently there are more of these that lead to the same or other places. I feel as though for some reason Matthias and Paula are wrapped up in this as well and I I feel we need to I feel that somehow this is all connected but I worry that if we don't stay a step in front of the church especially after what you've told us and them arming themselves so dramatically and unapologetically that if we wait too long we could get trapped and not be able to travel to where or how we need to. As you were saying this over the table, you can hear Aggie shuffling about with the oven bowls, knife and fork. She comes over and places like this bowl um, with a big slice of what looks like uh, fresh berries and rhubarb like pie and sort of puts it in front of Kamaka and is just like, we have cream, ice cream, custard or elderflower, uh, you know, syrup. Um, which one you, would you suggest? You can have all of them. Yes, I will have all of them. Now, and she starts like getting to work, like filling out these bowls. And she looks um, over to Charlie and Tony and says, I have somewhere we can go, if you don't mind. Old friend of mine, very lovely chap. Him and his husband, always so welcoming. Well? Oh. Outside? It, um, it, they're down, they uh, live down on the shoreline. Very nice, very nice chaps. And she's like saying this, like shoving bowls of like pie in front of all of you, pulling like this is jugs of custard uh, uh, and cream. At first, he, Tolan's like trying to motion that he doesn't want any, but as it lands in front of them, he just digs in. <laughs> <laughs> Absent mindedly <laughs> eating as I'm thinking. I mean, I can walk you all down there. Well, Aggie, I don't know if you heard, but that first set of knocks was watchers at the door, six of them. Yeah. I think you should come with us. I don't think you should stay here. Is it not having them drive me out of my home? This isn't driving you out of your home. This is you keeping the knowledge you have in your head safe. I'd like to see them try take me. I think I'm worried for them, but I also think that's why they came with six. Tomorrow, perhaps, <laughs> they'll come with twelve. And she sort of shrugs and smiles, like pouring the custard over the pie in front of you. Twelve might be enough. As I said, perhaps if you join us, then send us on our way to make sure we're on the right path. We can make a decision at that point, whether you join us or return here to okay, barricade fine, fine, yourself fine. in the fortress. I'll need to get the cats ready though. I'm not leaving them here. Uh, of course not. I mean, 
as she sort of pauses, I'm sure Jonathan won't mind, as she sort of like ponders moving, <laughs> moving these bowls around. It's a lovely house, nice and big. I just need to, uh... oh, we can just turn up. He's very hospitable, it's fine. <laughs> Looking at our group. <laughs> oh no, they love people. They love people. Wonderful people. Well, True. it's certainly going to be somewhere they're not going to immediately look, I would hope. I don't think so. I don't think they would. They're respected people. I don't think they'll go near them. I was and, wondering. And she sort of pauses. If they do, there will be an uproar. No doubt. I was. I don't know why, but I feel. We were talking about stories and how sometimes they are more real than anything. The fact that these shadows started Paula and her friend Noah was affected as Tuba was, and Matthias and her having such a connection that somehow she's a part of this too. It would make sense. Should we leave a note or? Well, I guess I, I uh, mean, we could use our phones. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I mean, it after all, it's what they're there for. <laughs> I think I had, I, I had started to text Paula last time, but I it never I never sent it, and I'm looking down at my phone. and was like, oh, oh, right. Um. <laughs> And I'll I'll send her a text just asking if everything's okay. Heard there were attacks tonight. And you can see um, Aggie has started shuffling about. She looks like she's packing a bag, like an overnight bag. Um, you can see her throwing. Um, in what looks to be like some cat food and some bits and bobs. She seems to be taking her favorite teapot. Um, she also seems to be taking just the odd thing out of the kitchen, a tin of biscuits off the side. And she, um, I'm going to go get some clothes up from upstairs. So why don't you enjoy your pie? And then we can head off. I also need to message John because I don't want to surprise him too much. He can be quite nervous sometimes. Um, Kamaka, uh, I hate to wrap you into all of this, especially in your first day in town. And I know you've got, uh, need to catch up with your, your niece and give her her gift, so thoughtful gift. Um, uh, you certainly are, I think, welcome to join us, but uh, it is certainly not, you're not obliged to if you don't want. Did you need help with your errand? I thought that I should take Tuva back to her home, but is she safe? Is there concern about these men coming for her again? All right, they might. And they know where she lives. Probably. I would probably know where I live now. Hmm. Again, I would usually take her back to her mother, but if that's not a safe course of action, then perhaps that's not the right thing to do. I do think that she should at least have a guardian, a blood relative with her if she's to come with us, so 
I guess that does tie you into whatever whatever we've found ourselves embroiled in. If I go, I think I go mostly for myself. Tuva seems quite capable of uh, trusting all of you. I mean, you've worked very hard on her behalf to make sure she stays safe. Uh, that's Charlie, we told him. And Tuva sort of looks up with like this custard around her mouth and the spot, like the, the spoon up, because she's sort of almost like leaning over the bowl. She looks over at Kamaka and is like, I mean, you're coming, right? It sounds like I'm coming. How much trouble are we going to be in with your mother when we come back? <laughs> Lois. But then <laughs> okay. she's got a silvers to look after now, so you know. And she just starts scooping up more of this pudding. Honestly, I was more concerned that Tuva might not appreciate the situation, but if she knows she's going to be in trouble, I, I know I'm going to be in trouble. You brought us Silvis for to live with her in her noodle shop. I think you're already in trouble. I think that's a different kind of trouble, and I think really we, we may be past that, Jin and I. But this part with Tuva being in trouble with her mother for staying out too long, and the idea that she's been captured by strangers, that I could see having lasting repercussions. And Tuva looks at Kamaka again with like a mouth. It's like you don't have a farm, do you? No, I will get one someday. No, I don't either. Can I borrow someone's phone like, to message my mom? <laughs> Tolan is like so like on Kamaka's yeah, side. Now. See, 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 it's not just me. He lives I'm in a seven. big city, Tolan. <laughs> no phone solidarity with my good friend Kamaka here. I actually am stuck with saddled myself with one, but at least it's the old kind. Mm. I know a fake. neighbor who has a phone. If I need a phone, I can go ask them to borrow their phone. See, that's what I've been doing, but everyone gets angry with me. That's why you know all these people, because they have phones. Well, actually, no. They, I think they know me because they now discovered that I have one, even though I often don't answer it. I tend to prefer to go to the coffee shop and then people can find me there. That's very similar to what I would do. It's about being on schedule, you see. My schedule's been a mess for nearly three weeks now. It seems to get Tolan very kind of like <laughs> realizing that it's been off schedule for that long. <laughs> His life has been turned ever since the trams fell. <laughs> Hmm. But, and as like Tuva looks like she's like waving this custard filled spoon over the table, you hear a knock at the door. And it waits for a moment. The cats don't rush over to the door at all. They stay exactly where they are. And you can hear Aggie from the top of the stairs. You hear something crash. Like, I'm okay. Could someone answer the door, please? Like, and there's another crash. She's like, oh, damn it. Like, she's sort of obviously moving probably very precious possessions around because she's packing. Well, <laughs> the church already knows I'm here. They don't know you're here. So let's leave that uh, secret if we can. Um, stay over here and quiet. I'll see who it is, I guess. Um, so Tolan goes over and um, sort of places his foot as a doorstop so it can only open so far uh, without them completely open. Just, um, just a moment um, and makes lots of sounds as though he's undoing lots of locks, even though I don't know how many locks are on here, but lots of rattling and stuff and um are there like windows where i could even like get a peek of who might be outside right here um, or? if you're like in the if you go to the living room area where all the books are you can definitely look outside because that's normally where the cats press themselves up against right. the window but there isn't on the actual door well he's already there at the door so mm -hmm. i guess he will just uh again with it open it a crack with his foot very much placed so it can't keep. I mean, they would have to really force it open to force it open. Yeah. Uh, um, out through the, like this, this crack in the door, effectively, you can see um, the back of a woman with her hands behind her back, 
she's in a very smart watcher's outfit and you can see very very long blonde hair tied up in a ponytail and as she can hear the, the click of the door opening she turns around good evening Tolan has no idea who that might be <laughs> <laughs> but Squall is really worried who that might be good uh, evening good evening ma'am good evening it's Mr. Folk isn't it yes yes it is Yes, it's a pleasure to meet you. Um, I was uh, just coming around here. I understand we had some watchers um, come round here this afternoon, and I wanted to apologize that they sent so many over. It could have come across as quite intimidating. Uh, yes, they were quite insistent, and uh, Aggie was indisposed at the time. It was uh, certainly alarming to myself to have such a presence uh, arrive here on the doorstep, wanting to escort us, her, this late in the evening out into the rain and the weather. She's an old woman, you know. Y yes, 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 of course. Um, again, please accept my apologies. Um, I'm actually uh, here. I wanted to, um, one, uh, see if um, Agatha was in. Um, and also I'd like to speak to Charlie, please. Um, and you can see a very, very, almost sickly smile on this woman's face and very piercing blue eyes. Um, uh, Tolan will go. Uh, Aggie is uh, still indisposed for the evening. And um, I, I don't know who you're talking about. Who is this gentleman, Charlie, that you speak of? Oh, uh, Charlie, actually, um, she's a um, young woman, a very clever one, actually. Um, you were seen with her at the coffee shop mul multiple times, actually, and at the festival. Oh, the troublemaker. Yes. The one with the, uh, she once came to my shop, made quite a ruckus. I am not fond of her. I was quite, quite miffed when she did show up at my shop. There's a lovely other girl there who is quiet, she reads, but this one, she seems to have a bit of chaos that goes around her, not a fan. And she doesn't reply for a good two minutes and just smiles. Tolan just... And looks at you. <sighs> Can I come in? I'm sorry, as I said, Agatha is indisposed for the evening and uh, it, really not my place to invite others into her home. And there's that really sickly smile again. Okay, well, um, I understand Agatha can't come to the door. Um, I, we won't trouble you again. That's absolutely fine. Um, if she could report to the church, that would be very, very helpful. Um, she is scheduled for a meeting in two days' time. Obviously, we can reschedule something if it doesn't fit. Um, however, we would like to speak to Charlie um, at some point. So if you could let her know, that would be fantastic. Thank you. She doesn't seem to be very fond of me either, but I will be sure to let her know that uh, you all are looking for her. And um, yes. But you enjoyed supper with her just this evening. What would you make you think that? My brother told me. And your brother is? Christopher. He is Christopher. a watcher. Ah. So... Very much like myself. You're saying that during a private dinner that they somehow think that they saw me with someone who I don't know. Yes, that's right. Interesting. So there is no privacy anymore for private citizens in their own homes with the watchers any longer. Is that what you're meaning oh, to tell me? Not for a blight bringer, no. Oh, I understand very much who I am. But that does not uh, necessarily should flow over to everybody else. No, it shouldn't, should it? And Tolan, can you roll me an intellect check? Certainly. 
I'll use an advantage <laughs> because. <laughs> Ooh, a seven. Ooh, and a four. Oh, no. You sort of, as she smiles and you're smiling back, almost just as sickly sweet, you lock, like, you, you lock on each other's gaze. And she's still smiling. And you almost feel drawn to these very piercing blue, almost icy eyes and you start to feel a splitting pain at the back of your head, almost like it's like a, a migraine is suddenly just, you know, like that, that wave of migraine when it hits you. And it starts have, to grow. Have I felt something like this before? You have never felt this before. Okay. This starts off like the niggling headache, but you can feel the intensity as it grows and grows and she doesn't break her smile and she doesn't blink um Tolan I think begins to reel a little bit um apparently I'm not feeling very well either no I will probably come back later I hope that's okay not today as you said, you're busy. Indeed. And I would ask that you review the terms of my non-exile, that my abode is still, and he is sort of starts hitching on this headache as it grows and can't quite finish the words. And it comes to the point where you know when your vision goes fuzzy, when you have that really explosive, like, mm -hmm. pain from a headache? You almost feel, like, slightly out of it. But this becomes almost excruciating. Like, you have to just, whether you just put your hand somewhere, almost to, like, center yourself. Oh, yeah. He would definitely uh, sort of grab the, the door. Mm. And she reaches out and takes the door handle. And goes, please let Charlie know I'm on a call and she closes the door and almost like that the headache stops and she disappears Can I have heard any of that you might where would you would you did you stay where you were like did you stay where you were or did you move I did and then when it like took a minute I probably got a little closer and just kind of listened whether it was like around a corner or never in view, but just like closer. You probably wouldn't have heard a lot of her words because it would have been more mumbled through the door, but you would have heard Tolan like mention Aggie, Charlie, and stuff like that. Um, and you can see probably Tolan like taking a grip on something close by. Did I take any intellect damage from that? Uh, no. Um, can I roll to see if Tolan makes the connection, especially that it started and stopped with the closing of the door? Uh, yeah, realizes roll, it was roll, her a, roll up with a straight insight check for me. Um, uh, yeah, I don't think I have anything, but you know what? I'm going to spend on this because, yeah, I would love to think that Tolan can put two and two together. <laughs> <laughs> um. So throw an effort at this and intellect. No, <laughs> apparently not. <laughs> it's almost like for a moment it became so overwhelming you couldn't even focus on her properly. And you're almost like as much as it stopped, it's like you're still reeling from just that ache and that pain. It felt like your eyes themselves were aching. So, Tolan not making the connection thinks it's him. Um, and if there's a chair like in the hallway or anything, 
He'll, oh yeah, there's a chair which you can see has had coats dumped on it. He'll push them off and sit down. <clears throat> and he's going to think it's because of him trying to put up this front of being confident when he was not at all. <sighs> and he just sort of sits there and puts his head in his hands. Once I hear the door close, I like peek around and I just see him kind of stagger to a sit. Um, would you be projecting that? As far as mentally? Or Not necessarily, saying, but just like... Oh, I think he playing? definitely... I think he's breathing heavy. He has his hands in his heads and it's... He is... He's obviously distressed by whatever's just occurred at the door. Even if you don't know the full details of the headache. I bring Jemima. <laughs> um, I'll just hold Cat <laughs> in front of him. I'm like, you, you okay? <sighs> he sort of gives the cat a pet, but doesn't really take it into his lap. He's not a big cat person, but... <laughs> Sometimes the cat forces himself, but I think he's sort of hunched over, so there, his lap is unavailable at the moment. But I'm making things worse. I tried to, I tried to act, act like I used to be, but I think she saw right through it and. <laughs> My own body betrayed me from the stress of it. <clears throat> he sort of rubs his head on his temple. What did you want? You. She knew we'd had dinner this evening. However, she said we had dinner with her brother, Christopher. I assume that she, they must have been watching through the windows or something, but it was odd. Why would they think there was, if they knew you were here, why would they think someone was here who wasn't? Christopher followed me into the tangle. He... I mean, even if he wasn't here, would probably be able to know that I'm here if he can, if he can was, trace. Was this the gentleman you spoke of that sniffed the air like the, sh like the shadow, who used magic with no anaka? And if that's her brother, then I saw them both. Wand? Yes. Striking. Yeah. Um, when I mention an Akwe, can I... Did I see an Anakwe with her? So, so absolutely nothing. She said she'd be back. Aggie's appointment, I guess, is in two days said she wouldn't be back tonight, but I'm not sure if I trust her. I'm not sure if I trust any of them right now. And as you're saying that, you hear the, 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 the creak of stairs as like Aggie's stomping down with this look, what looks like duffel bag, which is bigger than her. And as she okay. drops it on the floor, you hear like that clang of either metal and she's like, okay, I'm ready. Who was it? I didn't catch her name. Um, apparently, uh, Christopher's sister, a watcher. Who's Christopher? The the watcher who sniffs and <gasps> uses magic without an awkward way. That Charlie was mentioning earlier. No, well, she's gone. For now. Oh, good. Then we should go then. 
Kamaka, yeah. how is that pie? And she sort of like calls back into the kitchen of Rumera and you've got two of her in front of you just shoveling it in. It, it's very good. Okay, well, we're going to go if you want to come with us. Tuva, go wipe your face. And you can see Tuva just push like away from the table, jump off the stool and go towards the kitchen. Kamaka is picking up the rest of the pie. <laughs> <laughs> you can see Tuva like just taking one of the, the biscuit things off the side. Aggie, I have to ask from when you dropped your duffel, are there pots and pans in there? Only two. Oh. Uh, well, Jonathan oh. can't cook very well, you see. Of course. Um, I'll help well, you Well, Rickard does it. all the cooking, but I don't know where he is. He's always often being busy. Makes perfect sense. Um, will uh, your books be safe while you're gone? Can you lock oh, up and protect gosh, the place? Yes, they'll be fine. I was going to say finding he stops himself as soon yeah, as he begins to say that eyebrow. thought. Yes, I'm sure they'll find. And he like immediately uh, starts busying himself with his something in his pockets and patting him, patting down his jacket and getting his hat on as he realized he was about to step over a line. Right, come on, all of you out, out. Jeremy, Jemima, in the bag. And you can see she's got like this, um, what looks to be like a side bag as well. And she has only done the zip up so far, and they both just sort of pearl into this, and they sort of poke their heads out and sort of tuck back in once she opens the door, because this rain is still going. In you go! Blaine sort of puts like a little her, her raincoat over the bag rather than on herself. Well, come on then, chop chop. Tolan grabs the big duffel so that she doesn't have to carry it herself. Thank you. Okay, Mark has got the pie. Charlie, have you got everything you need? I'm I'm going and getting umbrellas. Trust. <laughs> Tolan has flipped up his collar, put on that waterproof hat. To have a leave the custard, dear. I'm sure Jonathan has some. Right now, if everyone is ready, we shall go. Lovely place. Come on, I'll show you. And it is quite dark out, and that rain has calmed a little bit, and it's more of like a spitting rain now as you step out into the street, and it is just illuminated by the lantern sort of drifting down the waterways as she starts walking you in a completely different opposite direction um, to the season tree. And you walk for a while, and as you get closer and closer, you can hear the shore. That laugh of the ocean, sort of on the beach, on the shoreline. And Kamaka, you've, you've walked down this street before as you came down here on the way up. And Charlie, can you make an intellect check? Yes. Yeah. I'm keeping an eye out. Man, our rolls tonight. <laughs> yeah, Charlie, you said nothing. Well, it's not twenty for the next one, so <laughs> yeah, we got it's bound to, to line up for that one. <laughs> and you walk through this rain. You can hear some. Of, you can see Jeremy. And, you can hear Jeremy and Jeremy mewing a little bit. You can hear just oh hush as she sort of pats the the top of the bag as she leads you all down to the shore. And there's like a ridge. It's almost completely on the beach. There's lots of rocks piled up to stop the waves from coming up, and almost like this stone built house with lots of these plants sort of crawling up. Um, the side, lots of wisteria sort of pouring over the side. Well, the whole roof is almost covered in wisteria um, as it sort of pours over. You can see a couple of lights on and she just holds out her fist and bangs on this door. And we will hop over to Paula. And Paula. So you have been thrown into darkness 
as these bookcases closed on you. And you stand in this darkness and it feels a lot cooler, like the temperature's dropped. You can smell that very familiar smell of books, old, new, dusty, and something that smells like cigarette, no, pipe smoke somewhere in this darkness. And it's, you can sort of hear Matthias next to you. He's like, can you smell that? What is that? Yeah, it smells like... It's like, like tobacco. A pipe or something. This stuff is weird. Hang on, give me a moment. And you just see, he sounds pretty knackered. But you see a very small, very tiny blue flame here at the center of his palm. And it just sort of, it doesn't give enough light to see around fully because of how weak it is. But it bathes both of you in a very cool blue light. And you can see that you seem to be stood in a corridor with wooden floorboards books everywhere not quite so uniform but there's a lot of sort of almost like wooden paneling um along the sides and you can't really see beyond the rest of the corridor as he holds it um out but it does feel very cool but you can smell that tobacco smoke you're not gonna like combust or anything right no, no, I, I mean, um, no, I don't think so. I mean, I haven't before. I don't just spontaneously burst into flames. Well, I wasn't so sure. There's been a couple times where it, okay. <laughs> I would take your word for it, Matthias. <laughs> what do you think they were doing in here? Did you know this was here? Uh, no, <laughs> uh, which, you know, I'm kind of still in shock that I didn't know there, there was like a whole secret hall in my library, but here we are, you know, I mean, um, there's, can you make an intellect check for me, please? Okay. Uh, is it a perception thing? Uh, yeah, it's, yeah. Okay. So, you can see the tiniest light at the end of the corridor. It seems to be on the floor, almost like there's a crack between the door and the floor. And it's like a very orange glow. And you can also hear what seems to be coming from that direction, like a low whistling. You're not sure if this is like a person whistling or something else creating this sound. Oh my gosh, there's another door in here, Matthias. And there might be someone behind, oh, you don't behind think it. It's just for these books? I don't know. I... I wish there was more light. <laughs> and he's just like, gives you almost a disgruntled look. <laughs> And you see him wince a little bit as it grows the tiniest amount because of how tired he is. Oh, it's don't like, push yourself. No, we don't have enough light, do we? <laughs> he just sort of holds it out and he takes a few steps down this corridor and you can really hear the floorboards creak. Like, this sounds like you would definitely hear someone walking down this, this corridor. And it's so noisy in here. I can't believe I haven't heard it. I mean... Well, how deep into the walls are we? Yeah, that's a good question. It kind of was getting, the process of getting in here was a little chaotic, so it's hard to tell. Maybe we should go towards that door. But as well, I don't know how we're going to get out. Um, well, doors are usually good for getting out of places. I mean, or going into places. 
you say oh. that, but we just came in through a bookcase. Which we got to through a window. So, you know, I guess all the rules are out the door or out the window. Out the bookcase. I don't know. Let's just go. <laughs> <laughs> and he sort of smiles and chuckles to himself. He's like, the door it is. Or the window. We don't know. And he starts walking <laughs> towards this door. And you can come to, like, you can now see a bit more light in this corridor, both with the blue flame and this yellow almost beam of light coming from underneath the door, which flickers a little bit, so you can tell it probably comes from whether it's like lamps, like actual lit lamps or a fire or something like that. All right. Um, if there's a fire in there and there's no one there to watch the fire, then that's a little concerning, you know. You should never leave a candle burning. That that's what you're thinking right now? Well, listen, there's all these books here. It's very flammable. I'm surprised you didn't set the thing on fire. I mean... I, again, I have some element of control over it. Okay. I'm still wrapping my head around the whole thing. You know, one of these days, I'll get it. Are we going in? Because they probably heard us, even if there is someone in there. As you're like arguing outside the front of the store. Maybe we should knock first. I mean, just in case, like they're like. Be my guest. <laughs> Hello. There is no answer. Oh, I'll, I'll like cr cr like crack the door open like just a little bit and peek my eye through. You sort of, you can peek round the door and you're looking in to not a study, but it does look almost like a classroom or maybe it was once a classroom. There are books to every wall. There, the, the light seems to be coming from Yes, a fire, but these fires are set in small crystals dotted along the walls around this big wooden panel room. And there seems to be lots of strange instruments in here. They seem to be bronze or metallic. There's abacuses, there's chronometers, I can't say it, chronometers and things like that sort of dotted around the room. There seems to be papers on the table, there's a sextant up on the side, and the ceiling is painted like the night sky. You can see star constellations docked over this almost domed ceiling. And it's not just these instruments around the room, but there are huge crystals placed about the place. There's notes on them. There's drawings on the table on these big sheets of paper. Almost like detailed, in-depth biological drawings of animals. And there's also this set on the rear table of three black orbs. Matthias, okay. come look at this. Why do I feel like we shouldn't be here? Because I'm feeling like we shouldn't be here. I don't think people want to know that this stuff is here. I feel like this is exactly where we need to be, Matthias. Why? There's so much to learn. And he's sort of like, <laughs> he pulls like on his hair and he's just like, we just saw people walk out of a bookcase. And now this bookcase leads to a secret room with all of these. And he walks over to this long, um, heavy oak table. And either side of four chairs, so eight in total, dark wood carved tall back and 
you can see by the fireplace that isn't lit. Up on the mantelpiece, there's a pipe where it's been put out. It looked like we found our pipe. Does it look like it was does it look like it was like writ, lit recently or that you is can it probably warm? guess that it's maybe from one of the people that left mm-hmm. through the bookcase um that's how recent it seems to be but this room is just full of bizarre things that you've never seen different types of rocks different almost like huge gemstones all of these big metal instruments you can see one that almost looks like um, a clock laid flat on its side with um, spires down. You can also see drawings over this temple, over this temple, over this table of templates of, as I said, the drawings of these animals. You can also see pictures of what almost look like, I guess, akin to like cave drawing style prints laid out in books. You see a very in detail diagram of the season tree. And you also see sort of an in depth drawing. I'm not sure what it is, but it seems to be a ring of some kind, like a ring of something, not like a jewelry ring, more like a ring of stones. I don't even know where to start with that. Yes, I mean these these biological drawings. They they remind me of a, a book I have, and I want to take all of this with me, but I don't, that would be stealing. Okay, okay. <laughs> we can't steal. Oh, they're probably going to notice. Okay, what are all these things? I mean, look at this. And like he sort of wanders over. And the way I describe it is like a huge chunk of amethyst is sat at the side, but you can see there are measuring instruments by it. There are different things, almost like poking into it. And there's almost a a light sort of energy that sort of crosses over it every now and then. Should I touch the glowing stone? When has that ever been a good idea? In I'm gonna story? touch the glowing stone with Don't eyes. Touch the glowing stone. <laughs> Can you roll me an intellect check? <laughs> oh, yeah, you get like a massive static off of this. Like it makes you recoil Ow. as you do it, and you hear the howl of some sort of animal come from this amethyst, almost like a wolf or something to that effect. And it echoes. And he's like, hang on. What did I say? You don't touch the rock. Don't touch glowing rocks. We don't know what it can do. I think, I think you're right. That was a mistake. My hand is kind of throbbing right now. Are you okay? Yeah. Did you hear the wolf or whatever? Do you hear the howl? No. Oh no. <laughs> did you? Okay. Did I heard you... a howl. What? That's why you don't touch the glowing rocks. Yeah. Okay. That can stay to the side. Let's look at something else. Maybe don't just touch things straight to. Uh, do you know what? Touch you. I don't care. <laughs> like, and he sort of goes, he sort of pulls out one of the chairs and sits down in it. And you can see him getting quite comfy. Like, I, I think I could have one at a chair like this. It, you're going to try to tell me that that's better than the comfy chair? This one isn't glowing. <laughs> and he sort of um, looks over at it and he's like, I won't lie, I miss the cushions of the comfy chair. Mm-hmm. But yeah, in this, yeah. I just feel, you know. And he sort of has a smile on his face. He's like, I don't know. I feel like this is the sort of chair I want to sit in when I talk to my brother. Oh, okay. It's that kind of chair. <laughs> I see. 
Um, it's a power chair. Apparently so, but why are there, um, looks like there's a whole dining table here with these sorts of chairs. Yeah, I mean, if I knew that we had a dining table back here, I would come here for lunch instead of bringing you to that crappy old bakery. I, hey, that's a good bakery. Uh, yeah, that's a pretty good bakery, but yeah. this is way cooler. Well, I've never really... I, I can't say it's not giving me a spooky vibe. Um, I, I don't know if this is where I'd want to have my lunch. Listen, you know, spooky, um, exciting... You know, there's blurry lines sometimes. Yeah, um, nice secrets, story. you know, secrets are inherently spooky, but they're also... The secrets don't have to be spooky. I don't tell people about my way. Am I spooky? That was a little spooky. What is spooky? It was a little spooky, Matthias. Especially when you would start, whenever, when you get all, like, excited and then you start to, like, heat up. That was spooky. I didn't know what was going to happen. I, was I thought maybe. concentrating. I really, you know, my first guess was that you were going to turn into a lava monster, if I'm being honest. I mean. How would I mean, that the, help? It wouldn't. I thought, you know, there's all kinds of, like, stories about you know, people that they get all emotional and then they can't control their powers and I can be emotional but I don't just spontaneously like Bleh. all right we can continue this conversation another time right now we are in like a super secret library and we need to um do some more exploring what yes. are these orbs I don't know but don't touch them not okay, yet, anyway. I'm Jay, gonna... I'm gonna offer you a jam intrusion. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I'm gonna you know take you it. want to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna take it. <laughs> this is like when Hans is like an Aiden. I'll take the jam intrusion earthquake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, this is such a bad idea, but I'm so curious. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Okay. Yep. So you do have an extra XP to give to whoever you wish. Um, but you can see Matthias is sat in this chair and um, he stands up and he walks around the room as you're sort of looking at these orbs sort of getting closer. You can see a sort of, almost like an oil slick sheen pass over them. These don't have any um, carvings or anything on them. They're just perfectly smooth. And they seem to always be on like little, um, tiny little pedestals just to keep them off of the ground. And Matthias is walking around some of the shelves, like looking at some of the books, picking up different things, and something clicks. And he immediately puts his hands away. Something clicked. I don't know what it was, but something clicked and Paula, in front of you, you can see where all these books are. They start to almost suck into the wall and start to rotate and the whole wall starts to fold backwards and a huge blackboard appears. With... It's like it never stops growing. But I know, but I, <laughs> I, oh, I should have taken my own advice and not touched anything. And this... <laughs> The blackboard is covered in scribbles. And at the top of it, it's almost like, the, again, there's a very detailed sketch in chalk. And it is of an orb with a few chunks missing out of the top of it, with drawings all the way around the side. There is also a small paper doodle stuck to the side of the terrarium where it has been in. You can also see all these little scribbles, this writing, this, this almost like musical manuscript along the bottom. And 
There's a lot of detailed drawings here of the orb. Hey, look, it's a, a terrarium, like the ones that Nadine used to make. Is that like, uh... wait, hang on. Didn't your friend have something like this? Uh, you know what? I hadn't seen it with my own eyes, but I've definitely been told. I remember, yeah, after we caught up, it was, I hadn't seen them for a long time. And we were, and we were at Bruin Bindings and they told me about something like this. What do we, hang on, and he sort of approaches the, and this blackboard is huge. It's almost like the whole wall has fallen away and become this blackboard and all of these tiny little notes sort of some of it you can look at and they don't seem to be in a language you speak in fact you don't recognize it at all there are little sketches of these strange tall people people images not too sure but they have huge antlers coming out the top of their headdresses you can see this almost like a drawing and Matthias goes, oh hey look it's my story and the running man with the huge winged almost phoenix creature bird flying off in the distance as he runs but this time you can see other sketches of animals around and I said like, maybe I should add that into my story that sounds like quite a good thing to add you know all the little animals and stuff normally I just stop it with like a, a wolf but yeah you know, and he seems to be looking at all of this does any of this make sense to you because I'm really confused other than the drawing no I don't know what this is I don't understand any of this, if I'm honest. I mean... Why, are, why is everyone so interested in a rock? You know... It beats me, but... Maybe it's more than just a rock. You know, maybe... Maybe it's like that other rock back there that... You know, can shock people. The one and, you touched? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that one. Huh. I mean, there's rocks don't know can have properties, magical properties too, I guess. I Well, I know I've read things about wells and things like this. You know when they things like where magic come from, like the season three. Yeah. But this this isn't a season three. This is a rock. And I don't think it's gonna be as big as the season three. Well, I mean, and look over here, and he sort of points up to what looks like a drawing of a map, a map of the whole of Junera. And you can see a place called the Summer Isles, Red Wolf Island, and sort of like the. Um, just all of these different places, the ladris everywhere. And on it, there seem to be dots where the chalk has just been marked off. I mean, what does that mean? What's why I always wanted to go to the Summer Isles. It's supposed to be really nice for holidays. I've always wanted to go everywhere. Well, I tell you what, after maybe we just go, like, we can go on a trip or something because I'm so done with canon right now with its moving bookcases and creepy shadow what's in the jigs I am so down to mm. go on a vacation I mean maybe that's what this is I could just be recommending the best vacation spots in all all the Dunera do you think they do that with a bunch of magic rocks no, I mean, I was just, like, being goofy, you know, but... Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm, uh... Yeah. Um, <laughs> and he sort of looks very yeah. embarrassed for a moment. <laughs> so, um... But 
I don't know what's so important about this orb. I don't know. What is this? And he looks down at the music. Can you read music? Um, I mean, I can a little bit. I play instruments here and then, but this doesn't really seem to be too much of an interesting song. This is just like a, the same tune over and over again. Uh, well, I mean, they have a whole bunch of instruments in here. Do you think you can play one of them? I mean... There's a wide variety of things in here, but I don't think anything is going to be really... And he sort of pauses, and you can hear him starting to hum it. And you've heard this once before, when Tolan has sung the song of the Anarchway once. It's almost like that, but it's similar. But there's more of an underlying drum beat, sort of as he, as Matthias just hums it. He said, "I mean, it's a pretty boring tune. It doesn't seem to be going anywhere, in my opinion." No, I know that one though. You? Do? Yeah, Tall and I'm sure I've heard him sing it once before. Well, like, but uh, maybe it's like a. Or like a lullaby or something, or just a, a happy tune that you whistle, you know. I don't know. I mean, it doesn't sound very happy, if I'm being honest. But, I mean, it seems important. Mm -hmm. You know. Well. I mean, there's some connection between all of this and in the other room there I mean they have maps of the season tree and and the stars what do the stars have to do with any of this I don't know maybe they just thought it looked pretty I mean it is pretty so you know and the and the 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 bodies the anatomical drawings you know that? I, I know these. You know them? Well, not these specifically, but I've seen drawings like these before. I found a book a long time ago. I don't even remember where, if I'm being honest. But it has drawings like these, except it's people. It's how I've been inspired to make my dances these are mainly animals or perhaps in that way i don't I... know i don't know what this is i don't know what the map is i don't know what the music is or what the drawings are or and as he sort of starts to wrap it on could you make me an internet check You can, as Matthias is just uh, like going, you hear the creak of those floorboards in the corridor. Someone's walking down them towards the door. He's like, I mean, you know, is this, this is just so much Shh. here. I'm like, don't judge me, I'm trying Do to- Do there's someone coming? And he sort of pauses, and you can hear that pressure of the creak of the set of shoes. I dropped to the floor. <laughs> <laughs> if, hang on, are you by the blackboard? You're literally um, in the center of the room if you Oh, wait, if I don't drop to the floor. <laughs> but guys, what are you doing? And drags <laughs> you over behind what looks like a huge armchair. A padded armchair by this um, by this open fireplace, and he drags you um, behind the sofa as you see the door handle move and the door open. And there's a huge sigh as a man walks in. Just oh, where did I leave that? There it is. And you see 
the middle-aged man, very smartly dressed. Now you can see that his jacket is gone. He's wearing almost like a tweed waistcoat, smart trousers, slick back hair, um, very dark eyes, firm jaw, and he walks over towards the pipe and he's like, time for kill me if I forget that. And you can see this tortoise like slowly sort of drifting through the air behind him as it sort of moves its way. And he's like, come on, let's head home. And he sort of pauses and looks towards the blackboard. So I close them, shake Cornelius, and this, this tortoise just sort of gives a low, almost like bow. Huh. And he walks over and just pulls the lever, and you see this blackboard almost fold in on itself and flip back up the other side again. And I need you to make another intellect check, please. Thanks. Um. Okay, uh, I'm gonna use one of my advantages this time. Okay. Because I can't. <laughs> Ooh! You watch this huge tortoise start to lumber its way through the air towards where the pipe is as he's picked up the pipe and it cranes its neck up and it sort of looks almost directly in your direction very much like the man did earlier before you entered the room and he's just like tapping it and he's like what is it Cornelius what and he's like, we're gonna be late and I don't want to get in trouble again and he pauses straightening up his waistcoat and you see a smile on the man's lips as he looks over at the chair, gives a bit of a nod, and starts late to for what? <laughs> Do you actually jump up and say that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He looks at you and watches you jump up. He doesn't seem surprised at all. And Matthias, you hear a visit like a, a proper like slap to the face as he sort of as he sort of tries to grab for you he knew he we were in here i like kind of like <laughs> like like um do that kind of thing to him to get him to stand up <laughs> and this man has very gentle eyes almost like as gentle as this tortoise that is sort of drifting next to him and he's tapping the end of his pipe getting some of the tobacco out so how are you finding the room? Well, it's a little concerning when I've been working in this library for all these years and was never told about the secret li whole area. It's because it's a secret library. That's, you know, you well, want you a drink. I would like a drink, but you know, I think at, at the very least, the librarian should be privy And he smiles. You do have the whole library. You just didn't know there was this bit in it. Now, what can I interest in you? Wine, brandy, scotch, tea, coffee. I'm just gonna have tea. You know, I need something warm. It's been a long day. Okay. And you see this huge sort of almost silver like tea urn in the corner and he sort of just flicks his fingers and it starts to heat up and boil like, please sit down uh first i should introduce myself and i go up to him and put my hand out to shake it i'm uh paula packer and um this is my um uh, matthias my yeah matthias <laughs> And he sort of like Matthias sort of does a weird like bob forward and holds his hand out and this man stands very tall and shakes both your hands firmly. My name's Rickard. It's good to um it's good to meet you. Please! Tea must almost be done. And he goes to sit down in one of the chairs, not before pulling two out for both you and Matthias. 
I see you like some of the drawings. I mean, I like everything in here. It's really cool stuff. It is, isn't it? And he just sort of, you can see a really happy smile on his face as he looks around. You found the blackboard very quickly. That was him. Yes. And sort of Matthias is like, sorry, sorry. <laughs> like sort of bowing his head down a little bit. But so, and he sort of stands up and brings that cup of tea over to you, one in front of Matthias. He leans back and pours like a scotch for himself and drops the crystal decanter down. So, do you like it? I hang on, I just tell my husband I'm going to be late, otherwise I'm going to murder again. And <laughs> he sort of roots around for a phone. Do we get service back here? And like, I've, I've checked my phone. I probably see the text message from Charlie you, at that point. You don't have any service, but he's like, I have some service. So you want to use oh. my phone? Oh. No, in that case, it's probably fine. Um, I. It's. And I he, love this. Please. You, you love it. You love it. And he sort of looks quite excited about it and leans across the table. Have you got the compass yet? And he looks very happy with a smile on his face. And we're going to hop over to the rest of the group as they bang on this door in the rain. And. Aggie's voice is sort of raining out. It's like, hello, hello. Like as this, um, you hear like a shuffle and there is almost a, a crash and a bit of a clatter as you can hear someone coming towards the door. And as it opens, there's a proper creak. And he's like, oh god, I must boil that. Um, hello! Agatha. And he sort of like, sort of puts his um, arms out and just sort of um, gives a, a really tight squeeze to her, almost like you think he's going to lift her off of the floor. And she's like, Jonathan, darling, I need you to meet, my, meet all my friends. And he's like, well, come in out of the rain. All of you, sort of suddenly realising how many there are. And Jonathan um, stands pretty tall. Um, he's also much, uh, he's very, very broad. Um, almost sort of jet black hair, very big eyebrows um, and a stubble sort of on his chin. But you can see him just wearing what looks like a pair of jeans and a shirt. He doesn't seem to be dressed for any sort of occasion. Um, his sleeves are rolled up. In fact, you can guess he's probably cooking something. Um, but it doesn't smell great. And if you remember Aggie saying she wasn't really used to cooking, but he's like, come in, come in. And you are welcomed into this sort of kitchen dining room seating area where one of the walls that looks out on the sea is just a window and a balcony that looks out over this. At the moment, it looks like quite a turbulent sea but you wouldn't think it in here. There's like a wood burner in the corner that's lit. There is a huge table at the center filled with chairs. Like each chair seems to be a different color or a different shape for some reason, like they've been mismatched, put together. There's something absolutely burning on the stove. Um, the kettle is whistling. There's something else uh, making a sound um, somewhere. Um, but otherwise, <laughs> This kitchen seems to be quite chaotic, um, but you're in this home and Aggie is shuffling about, like like going straight for the kettle that seems to be overboiling. Tolan, who is not a very good cook himself, is familiar of these sounds and smells all occurring at once and um, immediately turns away from the kitchen and goes to the door. And because uh, being a tinkerer and as he did with the hatch behind Broom, he starts to oil the hinges because that's something he knows how to do. He's in a new place with 
a lot of chaos happening. And so he's just going to sort of focus on, he said he needed to oil the hinges. The hinges are squeaky. So Tolan is going to at least take care of that. He's like, oh, you don't, you don't have to. I, no, it's good. I can, this is something I, this, the, this, I know that, this I know. And <laughs> just sort of turns himself back to oiling the hinges of the door. <laughs> Probably over oiling, he's a bit uncomfortable and just trying to. Well, um, welcome, all of you. Um, please sit down. I can do tea. You hear Aggie going, No, you're not. As, as she, you see her going through, as I'm picking out like cups and saucers. He's like, um, I'm Jonathan. Hello. Hi. Um, I, I would normally introduce my husband, but he is running late again um i was making dinner now that's ruined of course um but anyway um how can i help your home is my home amaka has gone into the kitchen and he just put a lid on the burning thing and left it there like that and he turns around to jonathan and says i still have almost half of one of agatha's pie uh, aggie's pies i would recommend you have some of this no, actually, that looks good. Thank you. And he sort of reaches over and just takes the pie and goes and sits down. He's like, I'm sorry, I'm a terrible um, host. That's the word. Normally, my husband does this side of things. Um, but please just make yourself at home. Grab whatever you want out the fridge, you know, that sort of deal. You're actually a lovely host. You've invited a group of strangers into your home out of the rain. It's just you seem to be a lousy cook i can relate and he comes over and sits and at the table with him i'm tolan uh nice to meet you tolan jonathan looks, i already said that but he looks yeah. to see if there's any recognition or recoil from his name in jonathan he doesn't seem to move about it at all okay and he does pause for a moment you were a seeker right um, yes, that was... You were, weren't you? I knew uh, it, I knew it on your face. Uh, yes, that was a little over eight years ago. Mm-hmm. Well, you don't have to stop. Did you stop for a reason? Uh, no. It's a long story. Fair enough. Um... Let's have a think. Um, all of you, you can sit down, sort of, Charlie, where are you standing at this point? Like, and well, you can, I... <laughs> like, you've just seen, like, Aggie lean over, tip this bag up, and the two cats have gone thundering out, and he's like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, as he just sort of watches um, <laughs> them go, and um, he's like, See, lo lovely host, you, and two cats as well. Jeremy and <laughs> Lima, they're fine. I'm just going to, yes. I'm still casting, well, I cast like a, a, a last like glance at the door as it was closing and then just kind of like watch Tolman do his, his thing. And I'm honestly looking around a bit, letting, letting the adults talk. <laughs> well, you've seen Tuva run after the cat. So she's okay. kind of left the room, but she's sort of run after them. Well, there she goes. Um, hi, I'm Charlie. That that was too fun. <laughs> uh, nice to meet you, Charlie. You can come and sit down if you want. Sure. There's just this this like nervous energy around her still. She can't seem to sit still. But still comes over and... um we um <clears throat> wait how did you know I was a seeker well she told me it just sort of gestures over to Aggie oh well that's I Aggie shouldn't have assumed I'm really sorry Oh no, that's fine. I mean, back. I mean, you look like a seeker. We all look the same. We, we 
all look the same. I've... And he's just like got a smile and nod as Aggie puts a cup of tea in front of him and she just autom- he automatically picks it up. I was a bit more of a, well, m- me and my apprentice were a bit more, uh, I guess, out of the community. Um, I guess I was never truly um, a part of it, I'm now realizing. Uh, it's, it's all right. I mean, I, uh, no judgment uh, on what happened. I know what happened. It was fine. <laughs> oh, well, uh, right. Um, Honestly, it's fine. And you can hear suddenly like a squeal from the um, the back um, room where the cats and Tuva just ran. And all three of them come tearing back in. It's like, oh, I wonder where he was. And sort of pauses and has a bit of a sip again. Sorry. Tolman has the same look on his face. <laughs> and as you, you, as like, um, he causes this huge lumbering badger sort of walks into the kitchen. He's like, all right, George, it's just them. And sort of pauses and takes a sip again. Sorry, where were you? <laughs> um, an Akwe badger or real badger? An Akwe badger. Okay. But it looks very real. Like it's walking into things. It's not immemorial. <laughs> It's a great view, like he says, he sort of like, <laughs> as he looks out the window and um, he's sort of like eating the pie. He's like, you should you get out there sometime? Great sea breeze, sort you right out. It, yes, it is. Uh, your home is lovely. Um, we will. Um, Aggie um, sort of invited us to come stay here for just a short while maybe just overnight or a day or two we've sounds about right uh, uh, um there's quite a bit as you probably know um going on in town um in the city and um Agatha seems to be a bit Aggie at the middle of it is, and I'm being drawn back in and We need to leave out several of us I mean you could do that here and you have a holiday at the same time and he sort of gestures over to the um, to the beach again he's like it's really good it's like you know, starry nights it's amazing I'll light a fire out there later we can go sit outside Thank you. No problem at all. And uh, and he sort of looks over at Kamako. He's like, "You're not from round here, are you?" And he sort of he looks down at the shirt more than anything, and the trousers that don't quite fit. Also sandals, and, uh, and yeah, sandals. that's going well with the rain. So <laughs> I'm not from around here, no. Where, where, where are you hailing from? From the Summer Isles. Oh, nice. I haven't been there for years. God, it's a bit cold for you here, isn't it? It's extremely cold, yes. Yeah. Do you want a jumper? Um, what is a jumper? Like a, like a, like a, a pullover, a sweater, the warmer version of what you're wearing right now? Yes. Yeah, I'll, I'll go get one. Yeah, I'll be back in a second, George don't. And sort of moves as out the kitchen as this this badger is just sat in the kitchen looking up at whatever was burning on the stove. Um and Aggie moves around, sort of putting all this tea on the table, dishing out more of the like, He's lovely, isn't he? You wait till you meet his husband. I thought the secret thing was a secret. But, um... Gentle circles. Yes, um... Oh, his husband isn't a seeker, though. Just so you know, if that's what you're getting confused on. He is the seeker, he is the anthropologist. Understood. 
I, I mean, I, I know I was a bit headstrong when I was out seeking and a bit, well, a bit egotistical, but I guess I never realized how cut off I was from all of you. No, we're still around. We don't make ourselves fully present, but you know, we're that we're still kicking. <laughs> I, I guess I made a lot of assumptions that I shouldn't have made. She just smiles. It, well, it's good to know that there are people to turn to who could, who can help. Oh, yes. You've just got to know where to go. That's always been the way of everything. I guess I was just so caught up in my own, in my own pride that I never thought to think of others or to look for others or to team up. I, I had this picture in my head of, of Edric Mao off on adventures by himself and single-handedly bringing these incredible artifacks back to Khan and and I guess that was all just... Oh gosh, no, he did do that. He was a real club cause. I, yes, I just, like I said, I just, I, that, I thought that was the only way. I didn't realize there was a way to do it with others or to be a part of a, a group. She smiles. It's more old friends that keep in contact. We don't have a society. We're not a union. <laughs> yes, of course not. I just, I'm just a bit rattled by all of this happening and so many big events happening all at once and new strangers and strange allies. He does kind of look at Charlie with that. He tries not to, but he does. <laughs> Pretend not to see it. And almost as you do that, um, Jonathan comes back in with this very heavy knit jumper that looks like it was made for like sailors out on long voyages and walks over to Kamaka, sort of holds it out in front of him, checking the size. He's like, Is your fit you? Uh, Kamaka wraps himself up in it and he's very broad and it mostly fits, but he's kind of like stretching the wool and so forth. But it's very, um, very nice. Thank you. And it does, it feels super snuggly and it's very, very soft, but you've probably never worn something this heavy before. And he sort of smiles and he opens the back door and he sort of goes um, over and starts to set up what looks to be like a fire pit just outside um, the front door the front door sorry almost at the front um, it's almost like a balcony that opens up through these um, huge windows and as you step down you can see the steps down on straight onto the beach and Jonathan smiles he's like I've got blankets if you get too cold so outside hang back and try and take Aggie's elbow, I suppose. I, I don't know where she's... Yeah, she's she sort of like something... shuffling towards you. You see she's gained a jumper as well. You're not okay. too sure where from. It's far too big for her. It comes to just above her knees where her skirt is. The best um, kind. You can assume she's used to like wearing probably Jonathan's or his husband's jumpers as they sort of go. Um, and she shuffles out, sort of takes your arm and leads you um, with it. And she starts, 
they step you step out onto the decking and you can feel that rush of just like it's very cool air especially to you kamaka but it's very very fresh but it's very very salty and you can all that you can hear is the waves and he starts like pulling up like these stools these comfy chairs you see him open up this chair for aggie he's like aggie like and sort of you can guess this is her usual spot and here and there like these almost like big tree trunks that look like probably washed up driftwood type tree trunks that he's he's looks like he's fashioned almost into a seat as it then just smoothed it down a little bit and he sets them up as this fire starts to go and we will hop back over to Paula and Paula you are sat at this table with this very smiley man that seems very happy that you're here and he's just like so uh i mean you can come in here again just let me know and probably not best to do it when the others are here but it's fine it's fine we'll brush me for that it's fine do you, are you a friend of my my mom's oh no she doesn't know I exist, so that's fine. My dad's. And smiles and nods. Yes. Oh. I hope that's okay. I probably should have said that. Oh gosh, I always do this. I'm so awful, like, I always get carried away with myself. Jonathan always tells me I do. I just start nattering and then it just keeps going. Well, yeah, you start just, asking like, me about my comp. <laughs> what? I mean, like, I thought you were stalking me. Like, <laughs> oh, gosh, no, yes, no, I know that's not meant to come off like that at all. Um, I, I just assumed that you would have had your father's compass by now. I mean, I literally got it this morning. I am so sorry. And he looks genuinely very, very <laughs> disappointed with himself. And he's like, I can't believe I did this. This is just, and it takes like <laughs> a swig of um, his scotch. And you can hear more footsteps start to come down this corridor. And he's like, oh, okay, you're really not supposed to be in here. So, um, and he sort of grabs Matthias by the car and drags him off the chair. He's like, can you hide for a moment? You know, just I could get in trouble. And he starts like ushering you both to a cupboard and opens it. He's like, shh, shh, and shoves you both in and shuts the door. And you can hear that door open and someone walk in. And he's just like, hello, just forgot my pipe. Um, and you can hear him tap it against uh, the fireplace. Um, top, this marble top. And can you make an intellect check, please, as they start to talk quietly? Um, I'm going to use my last advantage, I think. Uh, you have an advantage and a nat 20. Well, yeah, I'm going to use I'll success. use my last advantage. I want to know what they're talking about. <laughs> Oh, wow. Real, <laughs> real helpful. Thank you so much, Advantage. <laughs> you, you know, Matthias is like pressing his head against the door as well as you, and he's like, you move? like, it's that awkward, like a very, it is literally a broom closet. Like, and you can see there's some cleaning stuff in there. There looks to be some old papers and ink bottles and things like that. Um, and you press your ear against the door and you hear this um this older man talking um to ricard and he's like um i just i don't know if you'd picked up enough of the uh, the last book i'd left some manuscripts in here and well i shouldn't have done um i'm leaving for a trip tomorrow you see so i need to uh, gather everything up you you look rather flustered are you staying long the last time we spoke you were on your way home because you were running late and you could just sort of hear um ricard um just like oh, no it's fine i i am on my way like i said forgot 
my pipe, thought I'd have a drink, you know, calm down and everything. I'm gonna go now though. Um, I'll be heading off in a second, just need to collect my own papers up, you know? Um, and you hear sort of like a chortle from, you can probably guess it's the older man from recognizing the voice from the other room. And he's like, okay, well, um, I'm going to gather my uh, things up and I'm going to be on my way myself. My uh, boat leaves very soon. Um, I will see you when I return, Mr. Amal. It has been good to see you. And you can hear the door close behind and the, the footsteps start to creak down the corridor as he walks away. And you're sort of sat there, pushed against the door of this broom closet. And Matthias is like, just like, okay, look, this is really, really close now. Can we, can we not? And almost for a second, the door handle opens and Matthias just falls out. And he's like, ah, you're all right in there. Now we should probably leave. Um, how do you feel about dinner? Um, yeah, let's do dinner. I have so many questions. Okay, but can we leave first? Because I don't want him coming back. Um, but anyway, let's uh, let's go. And he sort of starts like you can see him pull it. Um, he his jacket isn't there, but he pulls on like a satchel and does actually stuff some stuff in the bags. And um, he starts uh, moving. He's like, "Come on, Cornelius, quickly!" As this 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 tortoise very slowly starts to move through the air, and um, he's like. Uh, I'll check the coast is clear, and then you can follow me. And he starts sort of ducking out of this room. And after a few minutes, his head pops back around the door. He's like, come on then, home we go. And he sort of disappears down the corridor to where you came. Are you down to join for dinner, Matthias? I mean, you know I can always do food. And the guy seems nice. <laughs> And yeah, I have a feeling if we say no, he could turn into like a crazy psychopath if we don't, so we may as well go along with it. Well, that's real comforting, Matthias. Hey, there's two of us and one of him. We got this. <laughs> he sort of looks rather <laughs> confident. We got this. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> okay. Let's go. And you can see at the other... The, the bookcases have started folding away again and moving aside as Ricard stands there, he's just like, come on! And he's sort of shrugging on like this tweed jacket um, that he left on the comfy chair. And he leads you out, down those stairs, and out through a door in the library that you didn't even know was there. It seems to come out the back, down by one of the waterways. And you do see a boat there there's no one powering it and he's like on your hop come on then. and Matthias is just like squinting at him the entire way like holds out your hand as he gets in the boat to offer you a step into the boat but won't take his eyes off of Ricard um I take his hand and I'm also just like doing the I'm literally doing the same thing and like staring at Rick. <laughs> like, you know, like my whole body's acting very casually, but my eyes are doing <laughs> are very Okay, off we go. And he hops onto this boat on the waterway and it just starts to move on its own. You can see Cornelius half submerged in the water, just enjoying the water. It's almost like he's being dragged along by the side, but he seems to be thoroughly enjoying himself. And this, the waterway is the only thing that's glowing right now. And you can see below the old city, all the fish, all the different sort of um, water creatures. Some of them you can see people walking down there. You can see they're in Narkway. You can see the trams that go down into the water. And Rickard sort of sits um, opposite both of you as Matthias is still squinting at him. And he's like, um, I warn you, my husband is a terrible cook, but um, I'll see what I can rustle up for you. Hey, okay. And after a while, it sort of comes um, up to like some concrete stairs up out of the waterway, which he just gets up and walks out of. We have to walk the rest of the way. Sorry, I know the weather's not great. 
please, follow me. All right. And I'll, like, kind of, like, put my hand up to, like, block any rain. Or... <laughs> and you walk down this cobbled street, and it gets narrower and narrower until you can see, like, some sand in between the stones and all of these cobbles. And you can start to hear the ocean. And it's it's very soothing it's very very calming as you sort of come up to this house with a wooden green door and he sits there for a moment and tries to shuffle around some keys and he has this um look on his face where he looks not not panicked but he's just very much like i am so late i am in so much trouble um hang on do i look okay like and he's sort of like looking at himself in the window like trying to make sure he looks good straightens up his jacket and he's like okay and he literally just pushes the door open and he's just like i'm home and i may have house care oh and it sort of looks over at all of you that are over by this wood burn this this, this fire outside this um fire pit and holler you see tollen charlie someone else you have no idea who it is um a badger and tuva and also this this very tall broad man with very dark hair who stands up immediately walks over to rickard gives him a quick hug and a kiss on the cheek and he's like oh more guests come on and you can hear jonathan like thank god you're home because i have not cooked anything and he's like i'll see what i can do um hello uh my name is ricard it's lovely to meet all of you and this is this is paula and this is um i'm really sorry what was your name it's like matthias but we know each other so it's okay i, I go i go up to to charlie and, <laughs> and with my hand and i'm like hi nice to meet you i'm paula packer <laughs> you are muted charlie <laughs> so delighted <laughs> and then i look back at uh and then i turn around I'm like i'm just kidding we already know each other <laughs> oh that's even better that's fantastic <laughs> um aggie and you see like um ricard like give a big smile and aggie sort of shuffles up out of her chair and like, no 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 don't get up and he comes over and gives her a hug and he's like has he fed you and she just shakes her head he's like okay and he looks over to uh kamaka and tollen first of all holds a hand out to kamaka he's like hello um i hope you're enjoying my jumper uh everything is fine yes thank yeah. you good no get cozy you <laughs> yeah and he sort of then looks over to tollen hi i'm rickard uh, hello, uh, Tolan Falcon. Tolan has sort of kept himself up close to the outside of the house. Maybe if there's a little bit under an eaves, just as he's a bit, um, he's uneasy right now. Um, and just sort of is keeping his back to a wall almost to make, you know, um, and not going fully outside his big wide open spaces. And that's a whole lot of ocean and a whole lot of sky uh out in front of him but he just sort of told him <clears throat> nice to meet you told him um i'm gonna go make some food so none of you starve to death and he sort of turns uh, and... um aggie uh thank you um aggie they made a lovely dinner for us earlier but uh, others might s still be hungry i stuffed myself fairly full well, I'm hungry, so I'm gonna go and get some food. You can hear him, like you hear the fridge open, and Aggie sort of smiles. Uh, what have you can see? Hey. I don't think uh, we've met. And I, I turn towards Kamaka. Uh, I'm Paula. I'm Kamaka. If you know these uh, people, you may know my niece Tuva. Uh, not very well. And I kind of like look at Tuva like Yeah, Tuva's like, looking at you in the chair, like almost squinting at you <laughs> the same way you squint in <laughs> um, regard. But yeah. it's inter it's funny that we all ended up here. 
They're Emily all Maggie. Cool. Maggie assures us there are no coincidences and it seems to be holding true. Tolan is just like a bit overwhelmed. He's from his earlier experience with uh, Christopher's sister. He's a bit, his confidence is a little shot. <clears throat> Um, Colin, I don't know if this is a great time, but I have some news for you. For, for, for me? Uh, he, yeah, remember how uh, you said that I should tell you if I get any new information about what's going on with my mom and the church and my dad potentially uh yes well i got some information <laughs> indeed um uh, was it helpful apparently my dad was some great explorer and inventor and like i think my mom even said he invented the trams and he disappeared you hear and we don't know why you hear the cup that tolan was drinking out of hit the ground and shatter are you are you okay uh, tolan takes a deep breath Here, let me go get something to clean this up. Uh, uh, um. Tolan looks straight at Aggie. She sort of just um, gives you a little smile and then turns the other way and drinks her tea. I'm going to need something stronger to drink. And he, as you say that, Rickard walks over and he has a bottle and some glasses. He's like, I had to throw my last one away, so I only have another one. Does anyone else want something like that? Yes. Like, <clears throat> oh, okay, okay. <laughs> and he starts pouring this glass, hands one over to you. He looks at it, he's like, you're too young. And then he looks over at Charlie and he's like, how young are you? Um, enough. But I don't want any. Okay. And uh, uh, Miss Paula, did you want to drink in the end? Um, you know, I just had all that tea, so I'm I'm feeling a little bloated right now. Okay, Kamaka, how about you? Yes, thank you. Yes, there we go. And he's like, and there you go. Here's your usual Aggie, and he sort of just hands it over to. Uh, I think Tolan will start helping pick up this cup that he's now ruined now feeling very even more self-conscious he's like oh don't worry about that that's fine i'll sort it in a bit but also almost as an excuse to sort of be sort of in whispering distance of paula and he'll sort of stop for a moment and if he's if she's close enough for him to and even she's sort probably of like using paper towels to like pick yeah up to sort of like try to take either the towels from her or whatever. And as he sort of, he sort of stops for a second, you know, doesn't hold her hand, but kind of just sort of lays his hand on top of hers and looks at her up in the eye as they're sort of both crouched there over this broken teacup. He goes, is your father, Edric Amal? Yeah, that was his name. He takes a slug of the brandy. <laughs> Edric Amal was my inspiration. Why I left school, why I became a seeker. And all 
this time the lovely quiet girl in the corner of the coffee shop was his daughter if it makes you feel any better I didn't know either <sighs> he gave me a well he didn't give me anything but my mom gave me something that belonged to him uh, and Paula will take out the compass. Huh. I think it's broken. Mm, no. You see, I thought mine was broken as well. He pulls his out. But he looks over to Aggie. Apparently, they're working just fine. They just don't point where we think they are. Do most people carry around compasses or like um because according to Aggie they find the people they're meant for. Oh. Yeah, maybe there are no coincidences. <laughs> um I opened mine up. I am interested, and as soon as I heard there was more than one, to see whether they all point to the same place or different places. And so I hold mine up and open it to see if our, you know, are our arrows both pointing like they're towards the same thing, or are they pointing in different directions? They're pointing in completely different directions. Huh. Well. That's confusing. I thought all of these are supposed to point north. <laughs> well, it's a funny thing about compasses. They normally point you to north so you can figure out where you're supposed to go. These apparently already know where that is and point you in the direction you should head. It's a good excuse to get out of Karnan. He looks up at the sky and sort of finds his way back towards the house. Yes, I suppose so. I think the church is looking for them as well. Charlie had a terrible encounter with them just tonight. We think there might be a connection between the Watchers and those shadowy figures we've seen and even the attacks tonight. I, Are you safe? There was attacks all over the city, apparently. It's been a long day. <laughs> um, I mean, we're safe now. Um, that's not to say that a couple hours ago we were so safe. I mean, Matthias came in clutch um, during some pretty tense moments, but um, we got to safety. We're good. I... I don't know what the connection might be, but Charlie, you, you spoke of this Christopher that he was using magic and acting like the shadows do some way? I don't... I don't know if he acts like them, but I just think he can sense magic like they do. Whether he can... I don't know, track it like Bloodhound might or if he feels it some other way, but he can see right through any 
illusions or shields or whatever I try and throw at him. You know, for a moment, they couldn't see me tonight. I mean, sometimes it already seems like they can't see me, but they couldn't hurt me. And I, I was able to move past them for a moment, but it was only for a moment. It was, um, it was another relic of my father's. It was, um, a heron on a necklace. Kestrel. <laughs> Kestrel. Has wings. <laughs> Two things that have wings? It's... Yeah. Um, a Kestrel was... Uh, That's the one, Kestrel. <laughs> Edric Amel's uh, Nakwe was a Kestrel, your father. Um, well, I don't know why, but somehow that necklace protected me from the shadows. There are strong protective magics that can linger. I mean, there are perpetual magics like that power the trams and many of the other inventions around Khan and are powered by ideas matched to invention locking the magic together like a key in a lock they don't need to be renewed like some of the other magics that people use for convenience. Those inventions, those relics, like you say, they are unique and as I said, they are they're perpetual. They they don't run out unless magic itself stops. That's what I've been so worried about with the trams, for them to fall, to fail. It, means, I... <laughs> it means that someone's attacking or draining magic in some way, as we've seen these shadows. Tuva tonight was captured and Charlie found her unconscious from the touch, much like Noah. There weren't any shadows in there. But I mean, if that means that Christopher can do that or others, I would guess his sister. Kamaka, do you have an evil church where you're from? <laughs> we have the same evil church you have here. Oh, oh yeah, Paulo, they have guns now. They have guns? <laughs> Just, you know. So, you know. <laughs> Almost as you say that, um... <laughs> Ricard appears with like this plate of just piled up. He's like, toast! Everyone can eat toast and likes toast. Toast! And he puts it down on like the, on the a small table that's by and each one is covered in jam. And he's just yes. like, I mean, like, you know. I leap for this toast. <laughs> Scotch and toast. Um, and you can see this fire in the fire pit starting to flicker and die down. He's like, damn, we need, uh, Anyone up for going and looking for some driftwood? I mean, Kamaka, you're from the Summer Isles, aren't you? You know how to do that sort of thing. And Tuba's like, me? I know how to do it. I've done it many times before, yes. We can go. 
we'll go and get the driftwood. Like, we'll it looks and over at Kamaka, like, <laughs> is anyone else going? <laughs> <laughs> I'm intrigued. <laughs> also, there's a lot of people here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, Tolan. Um, quite escape. If, <laughs> Tolan's first excuse to get back inside and not under the open sky um, will probably. I mean, I think he's kind of been drifting that way. He doesn't want to sort of, especially if all these new discoveries. Um, you know, he will stay out by the fire, but he'll stay close to cover as he is a bit agoraphobic um so it going out by the ocean under the open sky is yeah his okay. his confidence is not the place to do that and tuva is like you know like double footy hopping down each step onto the sand as you see sort of land arms out and she's like okay who's coming and sort of holds her hand out to kamaka come on and it's my toast. <laughs> Paula, what are you doing? Um, Paula is so exhausted from like, I mean, she literally ran throughout like all those alleys and rooftops earlier that night. So, um, I think she's like uh, enjoying this moment of peace. Um, and we'll probably just relax and nibble on some toast. Matthias, <laughs> by the fire. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the rest of um, so Tolan is staying, Holla is staying. You can see uh, Jonathan and um, Rickard staying as well. Um, Tuva is dragging her uncle um, down the um, down the steps onto the beach, and Charlie, toast in hand, is following. And Kamaka is trying to explain to Tuva that <laughs> Kaimi the cockatoo has terrible night vision, so. He shouldn't be flying away anywhere or anything like that. And you can see that, like, um, she's like, oh, Brenna's got great night vision. And you can see this poor panda, like, squinting. Like, it can't it can't see anything in this light. It's providing light, but it doesn't see anything. And it's just was keeping close to her before eventually climbing up onto her side and just sort of clinging to the top of her leg as she walks. And you can hear that ocean washing up against that shoreline. This is a very sandy beach with the odd like stone here and there. And <laughs> sorry, I love Zoom chat. Um, and you you can see like bits of seaweed. You do see bits of driftwood. And Paula is starting. Uh, Paula, God, Alice, the tuba is starting to pick up. Um, bits of driftwood as you sort of walk further and further away away from the house and you can still see the light of the fire you're not far enough away that it's disappeared or anything like that but the main thing lighting everything here is the anarchue and the moon that is currently sort of casting this real sort of this silvery glaze effectively over the ocean and it's quite starry out tonight. There's the odd cloud creeping in, but otherwise it's a very, very clear night. And you can walk for a bit and you're picking up driftwood here and there. And could you um, both make a intellect check? Sure. Flashlight owl is in full effect. <laughs> are we perceiving things? Yes, you are. Yes. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> My gosh! Uh, it was supposed like to I, be good. Yeah, now I feel like I should spend some effort on this just because. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm preoccupied. <laughs> you see some pretty driftwood and you're like, way <laughs> over there. And you. You're picking up like bits of driftwood. You can see Tuva holding up a shell every now and then, holding it up to the moon to have a look at it properly. And she's like looking at Charlie, like, yeah, look, and sort of jumping around. And Kamaka, as you're moving and picking up bits, or would you be picking up shells or anything as well? Or maybe not shells, maybe just driftwood for right now. Mm. You sort of picking up this driftwood, and as you do, you cast your eyes to the other end of the beach. And 
there is someone stood at the other end of the beach and it's almost like a a very looming shadow very very tall two antlers coming out from the top of their head and they just stand there unmoving and the only thing you can hear is that clack of the shells on all of these cords and strings that seem to be almost draped across one shoulder mixed and woven together with this seaweed and could you make another intellect check for me please just come okay. out about the rest uh just come out please is this anything involving deception or solving puzzles or perception again? Um, actually, yeah, it is perception again, but you can do a solving puzzles thing if you want. It's the same skill, so I'll just do mm. it. <laughs> Receptioning. Okay. As you watch and see this huge creature, you suddenly realize it's around eight foot tall, with these long sort of draping robes, with this mask, with the antlers from the top, and for a moment, you blink and you almost see the face of a Sylvus. And you recognize that this mask is almost like some of the carvings you've seen back on the Summer Isles. Some of those mm -hmm. from the rocks that are hidden in the old parts of the island. Ones that you saw when you were a child and you just played by the waterfalls and the rocky areas. And okay. it stares at you. And Kamaka is activating his understanding ability so that mm -hmm. he can get a better idea of how this creature works or what it's looking for, because this is what he would do is try to make a connection. Okay. Charlie, you're seeing what I see, are you not? Charlie hasn't seen it yet. Charlie, you can roll another intellect check to see if you can okay. see it. But actually, if Kamaka's pointing it out, are you pointing it out, Kamaka? Or are you Definitely, just... Definitely, yes. Yeah. Okay. Charlie, you turn and you see this creature as well. You've not seen this before. This huge... The antlers make it even taller. I thought there was one when I got out of the tunnel. Um... Like the, the secret door over to the, the church at the docks. Yes. Yes, there was. Yes. There was one, I but I didn't like inspect DM. it. I was like, I am Why? <laughs> 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 awful. They just were everywhere that time. <laughs> but you do, I did you not look at it for long. It's just like, oh, I thought that was my imagination when I was being chased. <laughs> and But you do see it now, and you see it very solidly. It's not too far away, but it's nowhere near like reaching distance. So it stands there in the sand. Have you seen one of those before? I don't believe I have, but they remind me of things I've seen before in drawings and carvings. Good things? I would say so. Okay. Um, we should probably go say hello. <laughs> Such a good thing. And Tuva's like looking. Is who's that? No, like sort of points over towards this huge creature. I don't know Tuva, but they're very tall, and it makes me think that they are probably a spirit. Make sure you have good um, manners. That's okay. the word I'm looking for. Yes, I'm trying to say to be mannered when you speak with spirits. And sort of nods and holds your hand. And do you start to approach? Oh yeah, definitely. I'm gonna follow his lead because I'm kind of like, I am. <laughs> you slowly- I'm some punk. <laughs> <laughs> I don't slowly, have manners. <laughs> you slowly approach this creature and it doesn't move. And Kamaka, the closer you get, the more you see the similarities of the carvings on the rocks. Like some of the rocks you saw in the Summer Isles of these protruding faces. And this is exactly it. And it looks to you and just nods its head, almost like a slow bow on its head. Yeah, so Kamaka like puts out his leg and does like a big bow, like a big island's bow with his arms stretched out. Like if you can imagine like a bird dipping down 
And uh, I'm hoping Kaimi takes my lead and does the same thing. I don't know how how well that's going to come across. Yeah, they'll sort of mimic you, and Tuva awkwardly watches you do it and then tries to copy, not very elegantly, but. <laughs> does I do a much simpler things. bow. <laughs> and this thing bows that little bit lower. And from its sleeves, it holds out its hands, and these long, almost like seaweed like sleeves. Driftwood starts to pour out of the sleeves and from the hands, just in two piles. And it takes a few steps towards you. And Kamaka in particular, because you've got your detective senses on. There are no footsteps here at all. It's not making any marks in the sand, apart from the driftwood itself and it steps forward to you so it's almost inches away from you where you bow and it sort of folds out one of these hands long fingers long palm and holds it out to you tuva go ahead and let go of my hand when you deal with the spirits if you're going to show trust you have to show absolute trust but you should be prepared in case something happens to me. Well, why? What's going to happen to you? I don't know, but I do reach my hand out and I touch the hand of the spirit right away. And Tuva just lets go of your hand. And as you reach out and place your hand in this creature's, it folds very delicately over yours. It doesn't feel pressure. You feel like you could withdraw at any moment. And there's that moment where you hear that singing in the air again. And very much like before, out the corner of your eyes, you see people in a street walking. Almost just like a very faint image. Walking down the cobbled streets. You can see families, couples, individuals rushing. And this huge eight-foot creature takes a step back and makes a gesture to pull you with it, but doesn't actually pull you. It just takes a step back. Tuva, I'm going forward, and again, everything is fine. And Tuva's like now gripping onto Charlie's like jacket. I and don't. I told your mother. I would have a visit here with five months notice, so I would be back again. But I don't know what's going to happen. And Tuva is a very slow nod. Okay. And okay. I'm... Sorry, go ahead. Nope, I'm going to step forward with the Guardian. You step forward with this Guardian. Charlie, you watch Kamaka almost become incorporeal. Step forward, and it's almost like he steps through the air and disappears. Both of them do. And you're left on a beach with a pile of driftwood. And Tuva. Whoa, 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 where, where did he go? Where did I, like, put a hand out to where he was. <laughs> your, your hand goes through nothing. No, 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 Charlie, make him come back. Where, where, where did he go? I, uh, I, I don't know. He said it would be okay. Where but, is he? Like, and she starts, like, shouting. I'm just like looking in every direction and opening up to whatever magic is around. Which like I feel overwhelmingly from Tuva, but just like trying to sense anything in this area. Yeah. You can uh can you roll an intellect check for me, please? Yeah. It would be more than a two. <laughs> Here comes the twenty. Here's a nat twenty. 
Oh, oh no! Oh my gosh! Okay, at the moment you're picking up, it's almost like an interference. It's like something else is interfering with your interference. Like you can definitely feel a dense sort of magic in the air around where you where Kamaka was. But he's not there at all. And you can hear like you hear t- like not a cry from Tuva, but like a whimper, like she's trying to be quiet, but you can see that bottom lip trembling. I'm gonna like dig through the, these piles of driftwood that it left, try like for any any kind of like sign or uh, anything that it was there at all. And you you start like tearing through this driftwood, and Tuva sort of puts her her hands in her hair. She's starting to panic. You can see Brenna getting larger and smaller. You can see around Tuva these almost shields like sparking up. And she just screams. And Kamaka, you have taken this hand and you've stepped forward with this guardian. And you feel your feet leave sand and you step onto a cobbled street. And you can see you're in an arcway at your side, chirping away. And you can see people walking in this street. It's not a street you recognize. It's not Karnan. It's not the Summer Isles. But there's people here. It looks to be late evening, so there's fewer people on the street. And it's almost quite a quaint place. And this guardian lets go of your hand and starts to walk down one of the streets. What would you like to do? Oh, I'm following the guardian. You follow this guardian. And as it goes, it seems to trail berries and leaves, and you can feel a breeze as it goes past. And as you do, it takes you round to this part of, you're not sure if it's a town or a city, to a big square where a tree stands tall. Glows very much like that season tree that you saw at the center. And a man sits underneath it, reading a book. He sort of looks up, looks to the guardian, smiles, and nods and walks forward and he walks forward to you is there anything you would like to do before this man approaches I'm just going to stand there and wait to see what happens this guardian looks to you and does that bow once more and turns to walk away as this man approaches a smiling face he holds out a hand and as he does for a moment it sounds like his voice is if you're like underwater like it's like you've just like your ears have popped he's like hi (laughs) it's gonna be a bit weird okay kamaka right yes kamaka hi i'm tom and that is where we'll leave Genera this week. And thank you, Han, so much for being a guest. This does not mean you cannot come back. I will say that now. Thank you for so, having me. It's so much fun. No, thank you so much for I bringing Kamaka because I freaking love him. Um, anyway, yes. Um, hi, um, I'm Alice. And- we run Genera here, so please go and check out and follow these wonderful, wonderful pl- people. Um, also, we'd love to hear your theories, your ideas, your what your favourite bits are over in the Discord. Please check out all the links that are coming up now. Um, 
Also, a huge, huge thank you to our wonderful sponsors in the form of Bird in the Storm and also Mage Hand Press. We couldn't do this without them, so thank you so much. Uh, we rerun this every Friday um, with the casting chat, so please come and check it out. This may not be the last time we have seen Kamakaka. Um, also, our new permanent cast member is either coming next week or the week after, so stay tuned for that as well. Otherwise, um, Keep evoking emotions and we'll see you next week. Bye.